Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my tutorial in which I will teach you how to make a light box for your website. If you didn't see the previous part of this tutorial, definitely check it out first. There, I show you all the HTML and CSS that goes into this guy right here on the screen. And today, I'm going to show you all the jQuery and JavaScript that goes into creating this light box. And basically, I'm going to give you a rundown of what you see here on the screen. Here, this darkened area is called light box background. This container right here is called light box panel that holds all of our information on our screen. Then you have the close button, the previous button, and the next button. And every image or movie or whatever that appears inside of this guy is going to be of type class NTT media file. So that is what everything is going to be. So basically, if you give an image or a movie or anything that could possibly show up inside of here, the class name NTT media file, it's automatically going to get loaded in here. And this will hold pretty much anything you could ever imagine size wise. So basically in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to open the light box. I'm going to show you how to show the light box background. I'm going to show you how to load the first image. I'm going to show you how to skip to the next image by clicking on the image. I'm going to show you how to show the previous image by clicking on the previous button. I'm also going to show you how to go to the next image by clicking on the next button. I'm of course going to show you how to close the light box and also, as you can see, how to get your light box to automatically resize based off of whatever content you have inside of here. So let's get coding. Now the name of this file is lightboxjscode.js. It's a JavaScript file. And if you want access to the code, it's there's a link in the underbar that provides you links to a zipped archive of everything that is here, even the images. Now since this is jQuery, we're going to start off by saying whenever the document is ready or it is loaded, I want to run a function and that's what this says. And if you don't know anything about jQuery, I have provide a link to a tutorial on that. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we need to open the light box up. So we're gonna say we have a link, that's what A means, and it has a class name of open light box. And when it is clicked, I want to run another function. Don't need to define a name for these functions. And the first thing that I'm going to do inside of this function is look for an ID. That's why we use a hash character there named lightbox background. And I'm going to say that I want to change the opacity using the CSS function to 85%. And then I'm also going to say, because even though this information is on the screen, it's all hidden, as you saw in the previous tutorial. So here I'm going to make all the hidden parts of the light box appear. I just need to type in all these different parts, like I told you before. Next button, previous button. And I'm going to say I want to fade them in, which means they'll gradually appear on the screen. Then what I want to do is get the height and width of the first image or movie or whatever, the first media type that is going to be displayed on the screen. So how I do that is I'm going to create a new variable, image height, and I'm going to say image with the class name NTT Media file. I specifically want the first one that is in the div and I want to get its height. That is exactly how you do that. Then I'm actually going to copy this because I also want the width and to get the width is almost identical except of course you got to change this to width and change this to width. There you go. Now with that information I'm going to change the size of the parent div that surrounds all of the media. So what I mean there, you can see here was the link that I was just talking about. I want to create this box that's going to contain this media. And since I know the size of the media, I'm going to be able to do that. So I'm going to say, this is how you do everything in jQuery. So I'm saying that I want to again get that image that is appearing. And I want the parent, meaning I want that which surrounds it, which just so happens to be a div. And I'm going to use the animate function to have it change the height of this div. And then I'm going to add 100 pixels at the end because I'm using pixels for everything here. And that's how you add 100 pixels. And that'll give me a little bit extra room at the bottom for my buttons. And then I'm just going to leave width that way. And I'm going to say that I want these changes to slowly take effect. And then we're going to close this function, this function right here. So I'm going to come back here and close it off. All right. So this is the first thing that's going to occur whenever that link is clicked and the light box is open. That's all. That's all the code that's required. And now what I'm going to do is actually set up the close button. So I'm going to say if an image with an ID of close panel is clicked on, I want to run this function. And then what we're going to do is we are going to do the opposite of this. We're going to make everything disappear. 
And to do that, we're gonna come in here and we're gonna say fade out. And that's it. That's all we need to do to make that work. And now that function is effectively closed. Done, that's all it took. Give myself some space. And now I'll show you how to use all the code for the next button so that when that next button is clicked, it's going to automatically trigger a click event, which is going to put a new image on the screen. So all we got to do there is again use this handy dandy jQuery thing. Next, media, which is the ID for this image. Just creating a function. Here I'm saying that I want to target the current visible image that has the class type NTT media file, and I want to trigger a click on it, just as if someone clicked on it. Because here in a minute, I'm going to handle that event, and I'm going to show you how to put a new image on the screen. And another thing that's pretty handy is to be able to close the light box if the escape button is pressed. Well, you want to do that because that's a common thing people do. They don't know what that X means in the bottom corner. And we're going to capture the event. That's what the E stands for. And we're going to say if the key pressed, we say key code, make sure that C is uppercase, is equal to 27, which is the key code for the escape key. What do we want to do? We want to fade out everything. Let's just copy this and fade it all out. That's it. You can see if you break this down, there's not that much code involved. And we want to close off that function. And now we're going to create the function that was triggered right here whenever the next button was clicked. And this guy is going to show the next image whenever an image is clicked. And there's no reason to do this twice, you know, handle these clicks. So I'm having anytime somebody clicks on the next button, I'm going to act like they actually clicked on the image. And then and everything's going to be handled right here. Scroll this up. I'm going to say NTT media file, which is the class. If it is clicked, guess what? I want to run another function. Don't need any attributes for that function. And I'm going to say if this, meaning the thing that was clicked, that's what this is a reference to. This is a reference to this penguin picture or this money picture. That is what this is. It is what was clicked. And then here I have to check to see if there are any more images to load. So how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna go NTT, and here I'm checking to see if there are any more images to load, and I'm using the next function to do that. So I'm saying, does the next image of class type NTT media file have anything in it? How you find that out is you say length, and then you go, is it equal to zero? If it is equal to zero, which means it doesn't exist, what we want to do is we want to close all visible images or whatever of type NTT media file if they are visible. And how you do that is by saying toggle. And then what I want to do is flip back to the first image that is of type NTT media file. Again, NTT media file first. And yes, I could do this in easier ways, meaning a little bit less code, but I'm trying to explain this stuff. So if you ever wonder, why is he doing it that way? The reason why is understandability. I want it, you to understand what I'm doing. And then, so that I do not need to resize the div over and over and over again, I am actually going to create a function called NTT resize div, and that's just going to resize the div that surrounds this media. That's it. Now, if there is an image available in the next position, what we want to do is we want to load it. So again, we want all the current things that are on the screen to be deleted. So just reuse this code. Boink. Then what I want to say is this next item that I know exists I want to toggle it, which means I want to make it appear on the screen. And then after I bring it on the screen, I want to resize the div to make sure that the div properly surrounds it. And that's it. That function's over. That's all the code it took to do all that complicated stuff. And also, this is the function that's going to be called if the next button is clicked on, as we saw right here. See, we triggered an event on an image whenever the next button was clicked, which is going to trigger this function down here, and then everything's going to run. And then what we're going to do is we're going to trigger some events if the previous button is clicked on. Now I'm just going to copy this just to save myself some time and change a couple things. I know code reuse is wonderful, but I couldn't figure out a non-complicated way to do this. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to say NTT if the previous button is clicked. I'm going to run a function and this guy's going to say if, and in this situation, I'm not going to be able to use this because this is actually the previous button that was clicked. So what I want to do instead is go NTT media file visible. So I'm saying I, whatever the current image is that is being displayed on the screen, I want to check 
if the previous image to it with the same class name NTT media file contains anything. Because I want to check if there's a previous image before I try to load it on the screen. Otherwise everything will fall apart and we'll all cry. If it doesn't exist, I want to toggle all of the current images to their off position so they're not shown. And then I want to display the last image on the screen. So it's just the opposite of what we had before. Everything else is the same here. Else, if there is something on the screen, I would need to get the current index value for the media item that is shown or the image that is being shown. So I'm going to create a new variable and it's going to be called NTT current media shown. And yes, I always use very, very long winded names and it aggravates a lot of people. Media file and I'm going to say the visible item. I want to retrieve the index for it, which means the number like an array that is associated with the order of those images. See, if we go here, and we close this and reload it, just like an array. This is gonna have an index of zero, this is gonna have an index of one, this is gonna have an index of two, this is gonna have an index of three. So I need to find out what those indexes are to be able to do what I wanna do here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another variable and it's gonna be called NTT, previous item to show. And I'm gonna take this index right here. And if I want the previous index, what do I do? Subtract one, not that hard. And then I'm going to toggle off or delete all of the current media that is being displayed inside of my light box. That's what this line is, just like before. And then I need to toggle on the new one. So I'm going to copy this right here. Remember, I can't use this because the thing that was clicked to open this function was the previous button and not the image that was on the screen. And then I'm going to delete this. I'm going to say, I'm going to use the EQ function to select a media item based off of the index value of it. And the specific index that I want to choose is this guy right here. And I want to toggle it on. And then I'm going to call this function. And then this is the end of most of the jQuery. So I can close this off. And you're going to actually get to see what this function looks like. And then we're all done. That's all it took. The world of jQuery coding is easy, so learn it. And jQuery is cross-browser, so anything you do in jQuery is going to work anywhere, even in absolutely horrible Internet Explorer. So what am I going to do here? Well, first I'm going to scroll up so you can actually see this. I'm going to get the current height and width of the visible media that is on the screen. Remember, I'm resizing the div that surrounds the media here. Come in here. And how do I do it? NTT, media file. And I want the visible media on the screen. And I want it tight. And then I want to copy this. Change this to width. Change this to width. Then I'm going to define my margins. Remember, the margin is outside of the box, or the div, or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to take this guy and divide it by two, or four. And this is just the way it ended up working out. That's all. And this is left, and this is going to be width. And then I'm going to say that I want to target the image that is currently visible on the screen. And then I want to target the parent, or the div that surrounds it. And I want to change some CSS code on that div that surrounds my image. And I want to say I want to define my height as NTT image height. And I want to increase my pixels to 100 and then define my width. And I want to do this dynamically so it's a little bit flashier. And you can change this to whatever speed. And you could also define inside of here a thousand, which would make it occur or this make this change occur over one second or you could change it to 2000 da, 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 da. and then as the final thing I'm gonna make a couple other little changes here to this div so I can actually copy this and I'm doing this on a separate area just to keep everything a little bit more tied together or pushed apart I guess I should say and I want the position on this to be fixed scroll up and I want to define my top which means the upper left hand corner to be 22 percent I want the upper left hand corner, I gotta define a left, so it's gonna be 22 again. And again, this is just the numbers that ended up working out for me. And I'm also gonna define a minimum width, 530 pixels, because if somebody goes and throws some sort of weird thumbnail inside of there or whatever, I wanna make sure that the whole entire light box doesn't collapse upon itself. And here I'm just defining my margins. Copy and paste, margin left, margin left. And I don't need this guy. And then I wanna close off this box all together. So that is all the jQuery code that is required and JavaScript code to make every single thing work here on the screen as you can see it. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Eventually I'm going to turn this into a WordPress plugin. Otherwise, till next time.